Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The second half of the Triassic period was witness to the evolution and early development of the most infamous sauropsid reptiles, the dinosaurs. The so-called terrible lizards first appear in the fossil record roughly 233 million years ago, and rapidly diverge into three major lineages, with these being the theropods, the sauropodomorphs, and the ornithischians. All of these groups evolved from a common ancestor that was probably a small, slender, carnivorous biped, with a potential candidate for just such an animal being the enigmatic dinosauriform Neasosaurus from the Carnian of Tanzania. Despite almost 200 years of study, however, the internal relationships within Dinosauria still remain a subject of controversy. It was long thought that theropods and sauropodomorphs were sister lineages within Saurischia, with Ornithischians being their own unique separate grouping. This interpretation was challenged by a 2017 paper published by Matthew Barron et al, in which it was argued that theropods and Ornithischians were sister lineages in a clade dubbed Ornithoscalida, with sauropodomorphs being closely related to the carnivorous Herrerasaurids instead. Although the Ornithoscalida hypothesis has not been universally accepted, it certainly helped to shake up the study of dinosaurian origins. Another related issue in this area is the lack of definitive Ornithischian remains that can be dated to the Triassic period. While theropods and sauropodomorphs are known from quite plentiful and diverse fossil material dating to the Triassic, Ornithischian fossils are notable by their absence, with the first unambiguous forms appearing at the beginning of the Jurassic with genera such as Eocursor and Laquintosaura. For many decades, it was thought that the unusual genus Pisanosaurus from the late Carnian of Argentina, roughly 229 million years ago, was the most basal known Ornithischian. With a confusing mixture of traits, not helped by the fragmentary nature of its remains, Pisanosaurus has at times been removed from both Ornithischia and even Dinosauria, being placed within another Ornithodiron lineage, the Silesaurids. These were an interesting group of lithe, lightly built animals that possessed a wide distribution between the mid to late Triassic. Named after the Polish region of Silesia, members of this family appear to have been largely quadrupedal, with long slender limbs, relatively small skulls and graceful necks. In certain respects, Silesaurids would have resembled reptilian greyhounds, and were almost certainly agile and fast running. Although more derived Silesaurids were herbivorous, the family as a whole developed from carnivorous ancestors, not unlike Lagosuchus and Marasuchus. The most basal known Silesaurid was the genus Luisuchus, from the late Triassic of Argentina, and dated to between 236 and 234 million years ago. About the size of a small dog, Luisuchus possessed a relatively large head in comparison to its body, and was equipped with small, sharp teeth, indicative of a carnivorous diet. The slightly more derived Acilisaurus was the oldest known member of the family, and indeed one of the most ancient of all dinosauromorph archosaurs. Native to the middle Triassic of Tanzania, Acilisaurus was a leggy, slender animal that ranged between 1 to 3 meters or up to 10 feet long. The structure of its limbs indicates a quadrupedal posture in life, although it was also capable of standing on its hind limbs for short periods. The skull was comparatively shorter than that of Luisuchus with conical, slightly curved teeth only present towards the rear of the jaws. The premaxilla was large and downturned, which suggests the presence of a toothless beak. This odd arrangement indicates that Acilisaurus was probably a generalised omnivore that fed on both plant matter and small animals. Histological analyses of the femur and humerus have shown that this genus grew at a moderately fast rate, with the higher metabolism than modern lizards and snakes, but slower than those of non-avian dinosaurs. This was also true of the type genus Silesaurus, which was of a comparable size to Acilisaurus. Also possessing a toothless, beaked premaxilla, Silesaurus retained small serrated teeth at the rear of the mouth, which were thought to be representative of a herbivorous diet. However, preserved coprolites attributable to the genus contain the remains of beetles and other arthropods, suggesting that Silesaurus utilised its beaked snout to accurately peck at small insectoid prey, much like some modern birds do. The most derived clade of Silesaurids, the Sulcimentisaurians, were more specialised obligate herbivores. A good example of this lineage was the genus Quanosaurus, 
which was native to the late Triassic Chinle formation of Colorado, dwelling alongside famous animals such as the theropod dinosaur Coelophysis and the large Dicynodont Placerius, about the size of a small dog, Quanosaurus possessed a deeper and more robust skull than other Silosaurids, which, when combined with its small leaf-shaped teeth, indicates a diet composed of relatively tough vegetation. An agile, active animal, Quanosaurus would have somewhat resembled a reptilian deer, utilising speed as its only means of defence against predators. A similar form, Sachisaurus, is known from the late Triassic of Brazil, and was also a slender herbivore with strong, elongated limbs. This species was comparable to small modern deer such as the muntjac in terms of size, and, like other members of Sulcimentisauria, possessed a toothless beaked premaxilla, which was notably similar to the unique predentary bone of ornithischian dinosaurs. Indeed, before Silosaurids became established as a family, Certain poorly known members of the group were considered to represent Triassic Ornithischians, such as Technosaurus from the Chinle Formation. In the case of the aforementioned Pisanosaurus, the reverse might be true. Originally, it was placed as an early basal Ornithischian, bouncing between being classed as a Fabrosaur, Heterodontosaur or Hypsilophodont, until 40 years after its initial discovery, it was grouped with the Silosaurids, although the issue is far from resolved. If Pisanosaurus was a Silosaurid, it would certainly help to explain some of the unusual anatomical traits of the animal. On the one hand, its open hip socket is a typically dinosaurian trait, while the possible ankylothecodont teeth are far more similar to those of Silosaurids. A very interesting recent study, published in 2020 by Rodrigo Muller and Mauricio Silva Garcia, has proposed that Silosaurids were not a dinosauriform sister group of true dinosaurs, but were instead stem ornithischians, helping to fill in a notable gap in the fossil record. Older studies had also come to this conclusion as well. This would mean that Silosauridae is not a true family, but a grade of basal forms that lead up towards true ornithischians, which diversified greatly during the early Jurassic. The weird combination of traits present in Pisanosaurus are exemplified by the fact that it was a transitional form, situated between traditional Silosaurids and core Ornithischians. If this turns out to be correct, then Pisanosaurus probably possessed shorter forelimbs than its more basal relatives, and spent more time running on its hind limbs, traits that would be developed further in Crown Ornithischians, which seem to have been ancestrally bipedal. Speaking of which, the oldest known unambiguous members of this major dinosaurian lineage first appear in early Jurassic deposits approximately 200 million years ago. Starting out as small slender bipeds, measuring between 3 and 6 feet long, ornithischians can be defined by the presence of the unique predentary bone at the tip of the lower jaw, a pelvis structure in which the pubis was swept backwards, reduced or closed off antorbital fenestrae in front of the eyes, and stiffened, ossified tendons above the sacrum. The teeth tended to be leaf-shaped in early members of the clade, suggesting a transition towards herbivory. Although it is worth noting that even highly derived ornithischians continued to incorporate animal protein in their diets on occasion, similar to modern herbivores like deer or hippos. One of the oldest of these animals was the South African genus Eocursor, a small, lightly built form that measured approximately three feet long, Known from a partial skeleton, with an elongated tibia and oddly large hands, this tiny animal was hardly any bigger than a Pomeranian dog, and would have been a skittish herbivore or omnivore, utilising a quick turn of speed to escape from theropod predators. Originally thought to have been of late Triassic age, the specimen was later confirmed to have hailed from early Jurassic rocks, making Eocursor among the most basal ornithischians so far known. Another very early form was the Venezuelan La Quintasaura, also dating to the Hatangian stage of the Jurassic, circa 200 million years ago. About the same size as Eocursor, this was the first dinosaur formally described from the country. Unlike the aforementioned genus, La Quintasaura is known from multiple specimens found in close association, which is indicative of social behaviour in the animal a trait which would of course remain throughout Ornithischian evolution. The genus possessed a very primitive tooth count and structure, with an unusually large number of elongated teeth present in the premaxilla. Later, more derived Ornithischians often lacked any teeth in the premaxilla altogether, 
suggesting that Laquintosaur is probably close to the ancestral condition for the clade. This would have enabled the animal to retain a more generalised diet, probably supplementing soft plant matter with insects and other invertebrates. Another basal ornithischian, Lesuthosaurus, was described from the slightly younger fossil-bearing rocks of the South African Upper Elliot Formation, dated to between 199 and 186 million years ago. Multiple specimens are known, which show that, like Laquintosaura, this small, large-eyed animal lived in multi-age social groups. Unable to effectively chew its food like more derived ornithischians, studies of the tooth wear of the genus have shown much less abrasion on the teeth than would be expected of a plant eater feeding on mainly tough, arid-adapted plants, and concluded that Lesuthosaurus was probably an opportunistic omnivore, feeding primarily on small animals during seasons when softer plants were unavailable. Some studies have concluded that this animal was a very basal representative of Thyreophora, the so-called armoured dinosaurs, although it is more frequently considered to be a close relative of the ancestors of Neonothysia instead. To sum up then, the lack of definitive Ornithischian fossils dated to the Triassic remains something of a mystery. Phylogenetic studies and the abundant presence of theropod and sauropodomorph dinosaurs at the time suggest that these animals must have diverged by at least 233 million years ago. Either the Triassic fossil record of basal Ornithischians is just very poor, or maybe these little herbivores were simply much rarer than their contemporaries. As noted earlier, however, the dinosauriform Silesaurids may turn out to be a grade of early Ornithischian relatives, being true dinosaurs after all. If this is the case, then it would indicate that all dinosaurs evolved from small carnivorous ancestors. Seeing as the most basal known Silesaurid, Louisuchus, was clearly an active predator, only time and better quality fossil material will help to illuminate this currently confusing situation. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the impressive Brontotheres, the so-called thunder horses of the Eocene period. See you again soon. Cheerio.